Good evening and welcome. Uh, my name is Raluca and I work as a trainer and instructional designer for Ascendia, the company behind Livresque. Livresque is the reason we're here tonight. Um, thank you so much for joining us, whether you're joining us on Zoom or on Facebook or you're seeing this uh, later on on YouTube. It's an honor to have you here. This is our first webinar in 2024. And that's really exciting because we come to you at the beginning of the year with some really exciting news. And you can see um, some hints on the screen and the image that we're sharing. I'm going to talk about these pieces of news first. And then uh, since we've taken a little bit of a break from this webinar over the holidays, we have a few questions which also come in handy when we're talking about um, the event that I'm going to be talking about. So I'll give you a sort of a presentation about Libresc answer some of the questions that we've been getting um, and uh, share with you the surprises that we've prepared and um, a little bit of our plans for the future. So without further ado, I'm going to begin. Feel free, um, I'll keep the chat on the screen, so um, feel free to ask questions. I'll also know if you're asking questions on Facebook Live. Um, so ask away. Also, if you're seeing this um, later on on YouTube, Post your questions in the comments and uh, we'll answer them um, as comments on YouTube. So anyway, get in touch. We're really excited to hear from you. So as you can see, the big news for today and the big news for the beginning of 2024 is the fact that we're going to be at BET UK, which is taking place next week on uh, January 24th. So from January 24th to January 26th. We're really excited to be there. We'll be exhibiting on booth SH23, very near Microsoft, which is, uh, who are our partners, our main partners. So we're really, really excited to be there. And we're excited to, excited to meet professionals, educational professionals from uh, all fields and from all domains. So we're looking to meet uh, resellers. If you want to see more of what Ascendia produces and what our content is, we're looking to meet teachers. We're always looking to meet teachers, uh, representatives from ministries of education or any form of uh, deciding bodies. We're also looking to meet potential partners. So if you want to join us um, in shaping the future of e-learning, um, we're actually, I'm going to post a link for you to register for a one-on-one -on -one meeting in chat. And you'll also be able to find this link as a comment on Facebook and we'll also post it on um, YouTube. So if you're on YouTube and you're seeing this before January 24th and you're participating at BET, uh, book your meeting with one of our colleagues with, uh, and you'll get a chance to meet our team, but also get a personalized presentation of what Libres can do. You'll get to see it according to um, your needs and according to what you uh, could use Libresque. So we're really, really looking forward to meeting you. Don't forget the link in chat if you're in London. Also the link in the comments uh, on Facebook and on YouTube as well. So without further ado, the other piece of news that I want to talk about is um, the possibility, or, or if you will, adding more AI features to Libresque. And this exciting update will come next week it's not live yet, so I won't be able to show you more than you can see on the image. But I'm just going to give you a brief presentation and sort of tell you how it works. Because right now we already have AI as part of Zlibres, and we are giving you, so right now you have the possibility to generate text. So if you want to work on the text resource, and I'll show you how that um, works exactly in a second, but right now, if you want to generate text, you can do so straight from Libresque, and it's connected to ChatGPT4, which as you may know, is the paid version of ChatGPT. So with a premium Libresque account, you have access to uh, the premium version of ChatGPT, not for generating images, but for generating text. But starting next week, you'll be able to generate entire lessons using AI, which is really, really exciting. So if you look at the image on the screen, on your screen right now, um, this is what the tool is gonna look like. So you'll be able to provide the platform with a title for your lesson, whatever you want that lesson to contain, to be about, a duration for the lesson, so you can set it straight from the beginning. Uh, and we will tailor or sort of the platform using artificial intelligence will tailor and will design that lesson so that it lasts 
that exact amount. Um, you'll also need to enter the subject, the age of your students. And I know that this example is for a 10 year old, for 10 year old students or pupils rather at that age. But um, it's worth mentioning that you will be able to generate lessons for um, all ages. So if you want to generate lessons for adults using this tool, you'll be able to, um, to do so and you'll be able to generate lessons on all topics. Then you can also set the tone for your lesson. And this again offers um, a lot of versatility because for this example, my colleagues have chosen Jovial. For a 10 year old, um, it may work very well for the lesson to be funny or jovial, but you can also create content for academia or adults and you can make it more professional sounding. You can select a language. And I'll talk a little bit uh, more about languages in a second because we have the freedom to create in Divresk, uh, to create e-learning materials in all languages on earth, almost, or at least we haven't yet found a language that we're not able to generate voices, for instance, in. And you'll also need to enter a few keywords so that you can give um, the AI tool more information about your lesson and about what your lesson will be uh, about, essentially. And after providing all this information, you'll just click generate and uh, have a lesson or a sort of a, actually a, a full lesson with activities, with quizzes, following um, a structure that is according that that will be in accordance to the uh, input you've provided and then of course you'll be able to edit this lesson and to add more things to to maybe um, change some of the quizzes some of the content that the, um, the platform has provided you you have the freedom to completely edit what the AI has provided you with as a former and sometimes even now teacher, I'm really excited because this will save a ton of time in uh, lesson planning. Um, I really like using AI as a source of inspiration uh, because it's, it's an amazing starting point for a lot of amazing ideas and for a lot of amazing content that even um, in our professional life as instructional designers, we uh, create. So AI, the, the possibility to generate lessons with AI is a really exciting update. I can't wait to see it live. If you're going to be at BET, don't forget to register for the meeting with us so that you can see it uh, demonstrated in a one -to, on a one-on-one -on -one demonstration straight from our team. So I've also mentioned at the beginning, I'm gonna stop sharing that image for a second and start sharing Livresque, our platform. So maybe if this is your first time at this webinar, if you've never participated before, um, I just, I'm going to be, give a brief introduction about what Livresque is. Perhaps I should have led with that. So Livresque is an AI um, authoring tool, which allows you to create educational materials or e-learning materials. You create digital lessons, very interactive digital lessons for your uh, students. We call these lessons projects because I sort of, when I was preparing and when I was answering the questions that we've been receiving, I think the key, one of the main keywords for Libresk is versatility. So we call them projects because your e-learning content can be a lesson. If you're a teacher, no matter the level, it can be an ebook. Um, basically, it's a, an interactive e learning project, and you can do or organize it in whatever way you choose. And I say it's versatile because the way you export it also dictate also sort of lets you use it in a lot of different ways. So we give a lot of export exporting um, possibilities. And I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to share my screen. Just a second. This is our library and this is our author. I'm not, this is the purpose of today is not to take you through, um, to guide you through creating your lesson step by step. We've done videos like that in the past and we'll do them in the future. What I'm going to do is show sort of uh, key features of Libresque just to give you an idea of what you can do and to sort of see how it works, but not necessarily step-by-step. Step. Um, you can look through our YouTube account, you can look on Facebook and you'll see more videos regarding um, building lessons from the beginning. So we're sort of 
because in my explanation, I'm sort of starting with the advanced feature of using AI to generate text, the AI feature we already have, and also we mentioned exporting. And that's because one of the questions that we've received is um, whether the students need an account in order to access the lesson. So if you're a teacher and you've created e-learning digital interactive content of any sorts, whether it's a lesson or a short ebook, do your students need an account to access the lesson? And the key to that answer is in the versatility of the exporting or the possibilities of exporting the lesson. The export button, so right now I'm seeing a sample project. I've named it sample project. I have one section. And there's a button for all projects that allows me to export in three different ways. So one of them is to download a SCORM file, so a SCORM compliant archive actually, which lets you use the lesson in an LMS, a learning management system. So if you're on Moodle or any other man learning management system, you can download the project or the material that you've created in Libresc and integrate that because it will automatically be SCORM compliant. The second way to do this is to publish in your personal shelf in the Livresque library. Now, this is where I can actually answer the question, do my students need an account? And the answer is no. Livresque is 100% GDPR compliant because once you've published uh, your lesson to the library or your material, we're gonna call them lessons from this point on so it's easier to sort of, but again, please remember that we are that Libresc provides you with enough versatility to be able to create ebooks um, and any types of e-learning materials. So once you publish your lesson to the library, we offer free hosting for that lesson and you can send the link to all of your students and they won't need to create an account in order to see that lesson. You can keep that link private, which means that it will not be possible for other people to find your lesson inside our library, or you can uh, make it public. So if you go, we have sort of two tools. One of them is the author, but if we go to the library, here you'll have a section called My Shelf. These are private links, only you and the people you share the links with can see. And here in the general library, you can find lessons that are free to the public that everybody can use. And no, you do not need an account in order to use that. So once you create your lessons, you can send the link to your students. They don't need to register. We don't uh, store any data, which makes us 100% GDPR compliant. So this is if you export to the library. And also your students won't need an account because you can also download the plain HTML package, which is basically an archive that contains your lesson and that you can run offline. Again, this makes us very versatile because if, for instance, you won't have access to the internet or you don't want to have access to the internet, I know a lot of schools across the world have intranet or have different uh, sort of restrictions in terms of accessing the World Wide Web. And this is how you can use a lesson without integrating it to an LMS, but use it offline from your computer. So this is another advantage. I've sort of kept the AI <laughs> feature um, for later because I wanted to create some excitement. So I can't show you yet how to generate lessons, but I can show you what we can do with AI already in Livresc and how we are already connected to ChatGPT4. Now inside my sample project, if I go into my section, I can basically add some text. And in order to add content in a Livresque lesson, you need to drag and drop it. I've dragged and dropped it from the content section inside my page. Um, I never get tired of saying this, but in order to use Livresque, you only need to know how to do three things. And that's drag and drop, single click, and double click. I think everybody who used, who've used a computer at least once in their life will know how to do these things, or maybe not just once, but a little bit, who can surf the web will know how to do these things. So as you've seen, once you create a project, you already have a section. And in order to double to edit that section, I'm going to double click it. And I wanted to add a text. So I dragged and dropped that text from the left side where we have different types of resources that we can add to our project in my main page. And now in order to edit the text, 
I'm going to double click it and I have this menu for editing the text. And uh, I said three gesture, double click, single click and drag and drop. We've used drag and drop and double click. We can select something using a uh, single click. So AI, how do we generate text using AI in Livresque? Um, in order to get to the AI generation tool, the first thing you need is a premium account. So this, as well as the uh, lesson generation with AI will only be accessible to premium accounts. And on our main page, uh, on our main website, Libres.com, you can find more um, information about how premium accounts work. Um, the price, which isn't a lot, this is like a spoiler, but you can go on and see exactly for the category and for your purpose of Libres, you can see exactly how much it costs. So basically, once you have a premium account, you will have access to this tool over here, which is AI Enhancer. If I click this, you'll see that it has two functions. I can either rephrase a text or I can generate a text. Rephrasing is really useful if you want to um, make a certain piece of information or text smaller, larger, or if you just need it rephrased. I'm going to take a short message that I've written in the Zoom chat for this meeting and paste it here. Here you go. And I'm just going to ask it to rephrase it small. You, as you can see here, you can choose the size, the number of characters you want the text to be generated in. I'm just gonna leave it at small. I just wanted to provide uh, me with a very quick rephrase. I'll click the rephrase button and then basically it rephrase the text and I can now click use in order to use that text. But besides rephrasing, I can also ask the platform questions in this a similar way, actually in the very same way that I would ask uh, ChatGPT questions, because again, this is ChatGPT for the premium open AI tool. So here I can say, what is a leaf, for instance? Give me an answer that a 10 year old um, would find easy and fun. And I'm going to select medium. 500 characters should be enough. We don't want to um, have an answer that is too long. And I'll just click send. And now I'm going to wait for the platform to provide me with the text that I've asked it. Okay, even a few emojis. I can then either regenerate or click use. I'll click use so that we can see the text here. And right now we have AI generated text straight to the lesson. So you don't need to spend time to go um, back to um, open AI, generate there and then copy paste. You can do it straight from Libresk. And again, starting next week, you'll be able to generate entire lessons using a few parameters that you're going to um, input inside the platform from the beginning. Now, in order to ask, uh, to answer more questions that we've been getting, and in order to show you more, I'm actually going to show you one of the lessons, uh, or actually a few lessons, but one lesson, um, straight to um, the entire lesson that we've created or that our team has created. I'm going to stop the share and then reshare with sound so that you will hear the avatar. Some of our questions are also related to the avatar. So, just so that you can hear the accent and the way it works. So this is a physics lesson about elastic force. I'm going to run it in view mode. You're also able to view all the project you do, the, your project throughout um, building your project in Libres using this little icon. You'll see it everywhere. I'm going to enter view mode for this lesson and we're gonna go through it together. Okay, let's enter full screen. Welcome. We will solve a mechanical physics problem related to elastic force. I trust that you can hear the avatar. Hope everything is okay. I'll take that as a yes. 
An elastic string elongates by 1 meter when an acrobat of mass M1 is equal to 60 kg is attached to it. At rest. What will be the elongation of the elastic cord if a different acrobat of mass M2 is equal to 80 kg is attached to it, also at rest? We know the values of M1, 60 kg, delta L1, 1 meter, and M2, 80 kg. We want to find out the value of delta L2. In order to solve this problem, we trace the following steps. First we recap the necessary notions. Then, to be able to calculate the elongation of the elastic string in the case of the second acrobat, we must first calculate its elastic constant. Lastly, we apply Hooke's law and calculate the elongation. Let's recap some useful notions for solving the problem. So you've sort of seen the avatar and how it works. You can add it in different ways inside a lesson, not just like this in a fixed position. You can have it um, draggable, sort of, so the student will be able to drag it wherever they need the avatar to be, not in this particular rendition. Um, this was all information and sort of graphics and pictures and text. Here we have um, an interactive resource called an accordion. So once you click one of the titles, then more information is revealed. And now I need to click continue on the avatar to reveal more of the lesson. Remember that in the case of suspended bodies, the deforming force is the weight. Knowing the mass and elongation of the rope in the case of the first acrobat, we can calculate the elastic constant by applying the law of elastic deformation. Calculate the value of the elastic constant. Now I have the cheats here so that I don't spend too much time to calculate, but of course we can easily remove. This is just text that can be easily removed. Hold on. Oh, sorry. I misread the cheat. 9.8 and then we have one and then we have five eight, correct eight. so this is one example of how you can use quizzes this is a quiz example of libresque and unless i enter the reason why my colleagues wrote the cheat here is this stops me from progressing if i don't find the right answer so this is the evaluation mode of quizzes. We can write quizzes and we can create quizzes in Libresque in different ways as well. And we'll see an example of that. But in this particular uh, instance of quizzes, unless I find the right answer, I cannot move on in the lesson. We found out that the value of the elastic constant is 588 newtons per meter. Knowing the elastic constant of the rope, we can calculate its elongation in the case of the second acrobat. Calculate the elongation of the string. Okay. And one. So let's just add another number so you can see how this works. For instance, if I added two, three, three. I would not be able to move on. I don't have the continue button on the uh, avatar or on the assistant, and I cannot move on. Correct. If I enter the correct version, the continue button activates and it allows me to move on in the lesson. So this really, Livresque in essence has a lot of tools that allow you to um, sort of guide the student through the lesson and make sure that uh, they interact with all of the elements that you find relevant. We found that the elongation of the string in the case of the second acrobat is 1.33 meters. If two acrobats with different masses take turns hanging from the same bungee cord, which one will cause a greater stretch in the cord? Okay, and this is a type of survey quiz, the third type of quiz. So we have evaluation, learning, and survey. Evaluation doesn't let me move on unless I provide uh, an answer. Uh, learning 
helps me find the right answer and we'll see it in a minute. And this is a survey type answer. It doesn't provide me with any feedback. It's just so that the teacher can sort of survey a few answers. So you can't enter a right or wrong answer because supposedly all answers are right. Here, it's just a matter of uh, creating a survey for the students. Congratulations. You have completed this lesson. So this was a short physics lesson. And besides these interactive elements, the quizzes, the explanations, the avatar, um, we can also add different types of applications, even from outside Libresc. So for instance, in this lesson about uh, pyramids, we have, and I'm going to preview just this row, we're not gonna preview the entire lesson again. We have an application that allows us to view a pyramid in 3D and move it around. So right now I'm interacting with it using my mouse and I'm moving it around, which is great for students to sort of see and, and learn geometry. And here we again have quizzes. Yeah, okay, we got a question. Sorry, I got distracted a little bit because I was looking at the chat. Uh, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> That's okay. I, I wanted to type it and um, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> I made a mistake, but um, I have a question about the, um, the, the question types that you mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. where there is, uh, what, what was it, an uh, exam question, a survey question, and another one. Um, is it uh, possible to ask a question where the uh, the student will get feedback whether it's right or wrong the answer, but it doesn't um, uh, like, th but they can still go on if they answered wrong. Yes. <laughs> So you okay. can do whatever combinations you, you want to make with, with your quizzes, you can do them. I'm going to give you a brief example and sort of in our sample project, okay. show you how this works. So in order to add a quiz, again, we drag and drop and we've added a quiz to the lesson. And in order to edit the quiz that we've added here, we'll double click it. So right now let's do the simplest quiz there is. Um, and we'll use a single choice answer. And let's just write a question. Um, what, which of these animals is domesticated? For instance, and we'll add wolf or fox, dog, and maybe elephant. Here we go. I'm since since uh, I'm creating the quiz, I'm the one who's going to select the correct answer. And the purpose of the quiz, we can um, select here in properties. So learning, if I preview it now, allows me to find the right answer, which gives the student the, per, the feedback. So if I click elephant, uh -huh. it will just say this is the wrong answer. But if I change the purpose to evaluate to assessment, sorry, I keep saying evaluation, it's closer in Romanian. If now I'm in assessment, which means that the student will lock in the answer. It'll tell the, it, it will tell the student that the answer is wrong. It gives them the opportunity to try again, but it won't tell them the correct answer. I think this is what you were looking for, right? Uh, no, I was looking actually for the other one where uh, they uh, told the right answer. This was wrong. This is the right answer. But they don't have to try again until they can move on. Ah, okay. Because so that, I would, that would do be this. learning, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because and I was I was thinking in the end this uh, um, the the example you gave um, in the in the lesson with uh, which um, um, yeah the, there there was a right and a wrong answer and in the end like uh, you you just had to survey mm -hmm. and um, the student didn't know if it was wrong or or the right answer that they gave if they just have a survey. So I just wanted like that the quiz would still say, oh no, that was wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah the exactly. Wrong one. So the purpose mm -hmm. generally, the per when we click survey, the per the whole idea is that there are no right or wrong answers. And okay. I'll show you exactly how this works. So I no longer can select. The selection is still here yeah. because 
but you see the uh, buttons are now gray, so I can no longer select a right or wrong answer. Yeah. I can only do that in assessment and learning. And yeah. it's assessment or learning because I sort of dictate whether I want to assess the student or help them learn. That's uh, how they were created. Mm -hmm. And more options are possible in assessment. I can give the student the answer, show them the solve button like this, which means that if they click elephant, they can press and hold here and see the correct answer. So it really depends on what your purpose is in creating yes. a lesson and creating a quiz. That's why uh, the keyword versatility, versatility really applies to all aspects of Libresk. So I hope that was yes. a satisfactory answer and it's all <laughs> Thank you. Now. Yes, of course. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. Um, so the avatar guides the student, the secret or the sort of great thing, it's not really a secret about the avatar, is that you can um, voice it yourself, so you can record yourself and be the actual teacher in the lesson, or you can generate, and these are all computer generated voices, you can generate the voice for the avatar in all languages, and when we say all languages, I really actually mean, I think, 99.9% .9 of languages on earth, because we haven't yet found a language that it cannot generate uh, text in, it cannot generate voice in. Um, because we, so these voices are provided by Microsoft. So you're really able to even edit the tone, choose from multiple voices from all languages, multiple accents for really popular languages like French, Spanish, uh, English, of course, English has a multitude of language of accents. So again, it's really, really versatile. And besides the avatar, you can also guide the student or sort of restrict the student using the concept of barriers. And I want to talk about this for a little bit because we got a few questions about barriers um, for this webinar and for previous webinars as well. Um, and the barrier basically works as a barrier. Um, it doesn't allow the student to move on unless they have completed the inter interactive resource above. It can also be added after non-interactive resource, a text or an image, but it's preferable to add it after an interactive resource. So for instance, if I have a gallery here, a gallery of images, which is essentially an interactive resource, a resource I'm not going to edit the gallery. I'm just going to leave it as is. This is my barrier. I use, I'm using one sing, a single click to select it. I'll go into properties here. Under reason, we explain to the student or to whoever's going through the e-learning material why they can't move on. Um, browse the gallery to continue. And then write a continuation, which is basically the what will what the button will say once it's activated. And we'll just say continue. So now if I'll preview my lesson, I'm not able to move on. I don't even see the quiz that's under here. We know there's a quiz under here because we've just added it. But I cannot see it unless I interact with the gallery. So once I finish going through the gallery, the continue button activates and I can move on. In this lesson that I've just shown you, the avatar did that. We've had avatars or messages, however you want to call it. The assistant did that for us. Um, we can also ask an interactive resource to behave as barrier, which means that if I delete this barrier here and I'll check this, the lesson stops at my gallery unless I see it, uh, unless I see all the pictures inside the galleries, unless I interact with it. So again, um, really versatile in terms of how we guide the student through the lesson and how we can make sure that they go through everything, that they watch a video all the way through, that they uh, listen to an audio all the way through, that they go through uh, all the information, all the tabs, accordions, and other interactive resources. Either a physical barrier, we can have a resource act as a barrier, or we can add the avatar to guide the student and give the student instructions. Um, another uh, question that we got was about team collaboration. And this is again, one of the features that we have for premium accounts. You can share a project with other members of your team or other people who have premium risk accounts, and you can work on the same lesson together. 
um, it may, it's advised that you don't work at the same time, but you can work on different sections, for instance, or chapters, or however you want to divide your project. So the answer to that question in short is yes, you can uh, work with your colleagues. You can share your project and I'll show you very quickly how that's done. So here I have a few projects. If I wanted to share, so in, in my resources page, I can see everything that I've created and everything that's inside sort of my own resources. And if I want to share any of these projects, I use a single click to select it. And on this bar here, I have the share button, which allows me to either share with to specific teams or send the link to other people. I copy the link, I click confirm, I can send the link and other people can work with me on the same project, which again offers great opportunities for teams working together or for teachers working together to create uh, content. Okay, going back, I'm going to open this project by using double click so that I can go back to the projects that I wanted to show you. Um, apps like this, these are all quizzes that allow me, and this is the reason why in this quiz, for instance, again, my colleagues are really helpful. They've given me the answers. Order the pyramids in ascending order based on the number of sides of their bases. So we have, that's why we have Congratulations. this here so that I don't have any trouble <laughs> in ordering. Um, another lesson that I really like, they're all sort of uh, science STEM lessons, but we, you can create lessons about everything you want. Another lesson I really like is one about the leaf, which again has um, interactive elements and 3D elements. We're gonna start the lesson again. Hello. We have Today we will discover here. the structure of a leaf and the role of each component. I'm going to move a little bit faster through this lesson. Have you ever wondered why leaves are green? I won't let we her record tell us everything. To take a closer look at the structure of a leaf, you so can place a small sample under the microscope and observe we it. We have a video. This here. way, you can see the inside tissues and cells that form the... Okay, I managed to stop her. And here we can watch the video. I can't see anything under the video until I finished watching watching the video. So I, I can't see the rest of the lesson. This is the exa an example of adding a video. And the great thing that I just want to briefly mention about videos in terms of versatility is that you can also embed videos from different video sharing platforms like YouTube, the most popular one. And you can select an interval from that video to show to your students. So if you found like a one hour long- Have you noticed the cells and tissues from the last part? You just want to show your students 10 minutes of it. You can select the interval and then another interval actually, and sort of merge them together without downloading and editing the video. Okay. Let's remember what we've- So this was the way it works. We also recall that the building blocks of the tissues are the cells. This is another resource um, that is specific to Libres, um, not specific, but you can find it and create it on any image, which is called the tags or the hotspots. And basically once you click Good. the title, Let's continue. you can find more information. I'll exit preview mode so that we can skip through it a little bit faster. Here again, we have an interactive 3D model. Let's discover the inside of the anatomy of a leaf. I've just previewed Using this. the mouse, you can rotate the 3D object to study it from different perspectives. So I'm Use using the, the mouse, scroll wheel to zoom in or out. As the avatar has just explained, I can zoom in and out of the image. These are created especially for these lessons. Um, but you can add apps like this to your lessons, or you can add learning apps, any sort of learning apps that you're already using, including Kahoot, if you have the premium version of Kahoot, otherwise you, the, the platform doesn't, the Kahoot doesn't allow you to embed it. But if you're using any other type of learning apps that allows you to embed the app inside um, any content, then you can add the application straight to your Libresque lesson very easily you can either add it by adding the application we're back in our sample project by adding the application from here so drag and drop double clicking and uploading the file or inside a text resource if i double click i can work on the source and just paste um 
uh, uh, text and just paste the iframe. Again, I got distracted. I'm sorry. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go back to the question in a second. And you can just paste the iframe link here in the source. What app was used for 3D hotspots? So 3D hotspots are actually created, the one you saw here is created by our colleagues. We have hotspots straight from Libresk here, but it's not 3D. It's not interactive. So here you just would change this image and add hotspots and sort of see um, information about it like this. So if you change this image to anything you like, and now it's really easy to work with images in Libresk because we have stock photos. So you can search the free sources and just add any stock photo you want to Libresk. I'll show you in a second. Basically, you can show something on this photo using hotspots. You can change the location of all these elements of the hotspots. So in order to change this picture, I'm going to go to change image, select stock photo and search for something. Uh, maybe something we can structure in an easier way. We'll search for a plant and roots, something that has roots. So it's easier to sort of pinpoint. Here we go, we'll just use this. So again, you can select, you can search through three search stock photo search engines and you can use any of these photos. You don't need to worry about copyright um, and you can add them in the size that you need straight from Libresk. So once I've searched for an image in, uh, inside a source, I hover my mouse over that image and then this button on the left side corner appears and I can click use image. I'll move it around to the point where the, to where I need it to be. And then using my mouse, I'll drag these labels. I'll actually delete one. I just want to make one. I'll drag my label to wherever I need it to be. Let's, I'll edit it from the property side here. Roots, roots are used or whatever. And sort of this is how Hotspot works um, in Libresk. It's not 3D, the 3D app was created uh, again, especially for that lesson. This was a very uh, fast way of showing you hotspots. I promise that in future webinars we'll go step by step. Uh, this is just to sort of give you a brief idea of how it works and what it looks like and what you can do. But if you need a more in-depth guide, just stick around for these webinars. They take place every two weeks um, on Thursdays and we'll start explaining. And we've already, we've already talked about quizzes. I think we have about an hour long uh, presentation on quizzes uh, where you, you'll be able to see all the details regarding quizzes. And that's up on YouTube and on Facebook as well. So if you need more info or if you get stuck while building quizzes, you can go straight to, um, to that presentation, to that video. And another thing that I wanted to show you was even more apps that you can select. Uh, for instance, my colleagues designed, and this is again designed in-house, designed an experiment, a chemistry experiment, which is really cool to, uh, to do. This is added as Let's an app. Let's start the experiment. Drag the watch glass with powdered sulfur over the flat-bottomed flask. I'm adding sulfur. Pull the glass tube rubber stopper over the flat-bottomed flask. Open the valve of the hydrogen tank. Press the Bunsen burner to light the flame. Notice what happens. Here we go. And this is this allowed me to do an experiment. Write down your observations and conclusions. Okay. And I think I covered most of the questions. Um, how can you record? Okay, sorry, just, I just just noticed this one. How can you record yourself and add your voice to your lesson and replace the avatar? So if you're starting on a sample project, we're going to go back to our sample project. In order to add an avatar to your lesson, you're going to take it from the content uh, side on the left and drag it over your content. Um, and wherever you need. So 
the main rule of thumb sort of is that if it comes before a resource, it will start playing before a resource. If you put it on the right, on the left hand side corner, if you put it on the right lower corner, on the left lower corner, sorry. So if you put it here, it will be simultaneous with the content. And if you put it up here, then it will come before the content. Um, again, we'll do a more in-depth presentation on avatars, but just to, to show you a little bit. And if you want to change and record your own voice, we go into the properties once I have the avatar selected using a single click. And here on sound, we can either upload a recording and you can upload MP3 files here. You can generate voice. Here you select the language. I told you we have a lot of languages, hopefully all, if not almost all languages on earth. Then you select a voice. We have a lot of voices, at least for English, but English obviously is the mm, widest array of voices, but we have many voices for other languages as well. You write the text here, and then the avatar will just start speaking it. For instance, we'll leave it like that. Write a text for sound generation. It just said what I asked it to say. And now I have the avatar. And if I want to record my own voice, I don't have an MP3 recording of my voice already. I want to record it straight from the platform. We can click record and we have a, basically a small recorder that allows us to record, rec uh, record our voice. Right now it's recording. I clicked the button. I can stop recording. If I play back to record, rec uh, record. you'll hear my voice. We will not save this. And this is sort of how the avatar works. The image can be changed as well. And I'll show you how in a, in a future episode about avatars. Um, to sort of change the picture, you can add your own picture if you want. You can add other animations or other static pictures and uh, use it to guide your student. The avatar, the voice generation is a premium feature, but the avatar you can add uh, even if you have a free account. So that's great as well. If so, if there are no more questions, uh, I don't see others in chat. I just want to remind you again that if you are going to be at BET next week, come and meet us. You have the link in the YouTube chat, in the Zoom chat, um, and also on Facebook in the comments and on YouTube. Book a meeting with our team and you can get a personalized, um, a personalized, a personalized, sorry, <laughs> um, demonstration of the risk. You'll see how it works one-on-one -on -one with all the features. And also stay tuned for uh, the AI generation tool, which is really, really exciting and which will save uh, teachers a lot of time and change how e-learning works, we hope. So no other questions. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you back here in two weeks after Beth.